So here I am sitting at the Terrazos Library downtown with the homeless, just uh, working on some legal activism and thinking things through when lo and behold, who shows up? Sergeant James Dixon of Downtown Austin Command, the DTAP. And uh, Sergeant James Dixon has been on Fox News talking about uh, Project Wolfpack and, and different things where they're entrapping the homeless. Sergeant Dixon is standing there with his dress uniform and his medals, uh, bars, and uh, I ask him, what's going on? He's standing over me at the library. What's going on? He's like, oh, uh, not much. We just have a commander's forum going on. Oh, commander's forum. Aren't those open to the public? Oh, uh, no, no, no. I don't think so, no. And so he tries to keep me out of the meeting against the Texas Open Meetings Act, which is a violation of state law. Uh, actually, all the public is invited. The problem is almost everybody in that room that was invited is part of the problem. They're part of the policing of the homeless. They had the uh, Gangsters in Red, the uh, uh, Downtown Austin Alliance, which is a mob created of narc, brown-shirted type people. They call the police on the homeless downtown. And we had uh, a bunch of concerned citizens and different department people and, uh, and a bunch of police officers. All of them focused on targeting the homeless. No dissenting opinions, no, no, uh, Nothing to really consider, just go, 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 and, and just a bunch of charts on how we, how much uh, money, uh, how many how many arrests they've had, um, how many uh, felony arrests, six, minimum six month felony arrests um, for people laying on the ground with money hanging out on cell phones, and the, the homeless oh, or allegedly robbed them. So, you know, they've had a number of things, bicycles that, they, that are trap bicycles uh, to tra trap the homeless. Basically all sorts of uh, homeless entrapment measures, but hardly any measures to, 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 uh, were mentioned to help the homeless. So I raised my hand a few times and asked a few questions and started directing the conversation into what about the homeless rights and, and what about helping the homeless and what about alleviating a problem and, and solutions. And then uh, the commander spent a few minutes talking about the host program, which is uh, Austin. Uh, the city of Austin has put together a team of APD, EMS, caseworkers to help people that are on the streets one by one. And they are making a difference, a small difference. It's a very small program compared to the number of arrests they've made. So it's clear where the money and intentions are spent. And I think it's unethical, immoral, uh, inhumane, and illegal against violation of international human rights laws, and I, I wanted to be included in the conversation and have the Challenger newspaper included in future conversations, not just Echo, the Arch, and the police, and the Downtown Austin Alliance, and a few concerned citizens that hate the homeless. So, uh, I, uh, I, you'll see it in the video. You'll see, uh, you'll hear me interject, and I changed the, the tone of the forum, but I just wanted to release this out to everybody who would be affected by Austin policing and I want everybody to be open and transparent and see what's going on with your tax money. And uh, as a reporter, I have a duty to, and as a concerned citizen, I have a duty to let you guys know this. In the name of transparency, here we go. There really is a lot of uh, people coming to this commander's forum, considering nobody knew there was a commander's forum. The Dust Downtown Austin Alliance is here. We've got some uh, sergeants. Other people. Let's see where the unmarked cars are. So well, this is an unmarked car that uh, the Attorney General didn't want to give me access to. That yeah, one. That's another unmarked car. You got this clown. There's Mercedes. There's another unmarked car. Ford Explorer. Policed out. Another unmarked car. This is a good day to look for unmarked cars. Your gold car. Another Ford. We're gonna have a good meeting. I can see. Oh yeah, and there's a camera there. Uh, and then I have street narcotics. Should be here. Pretty soon. Oh, there he is right there. 
Uh, going to talk about some stuff about K2 and that kind of stuff. As you all know, we had a pretty massive epidemic uh, over at the Arch or the Arch area uh, over the last few days, especially concentrating on last week with 90, I think, 90 something patients or something. So uh, we did want to go over uh, a few things. and uh, we, Lieutenant Robert Hightower here has, is the operations lieutenant right now. Uh, he also has parks and lakes, so he has a kind of dual duty right now. Uh, we have day shift lieutenant is James Nisla. He's in the back. He's a patrol lieutenant. And then Ryan Adam and John Herring are probably out on, the, out on the road right now. And then Lieutenant Alan Hicks is the night shift lieutenant. This is uh, some statistics. I, I hate to bore everybody with statistics, but you can see, I know uh, sometimes it doesn't feel like we're doing a lot downtown, but we actually have initiatives running almost daily. Every Monday and Thursday we run uh, initiatives on aggressive pain handling in particular, and then sometimes we'll concentrate on robbery initiatives or, or other things. Uh, Sergeant James Dixon, he's in the back, and he'll, he'll come up here and tell you a little bit about MedTAC. We have a MetroTAC unit, which is kind of a, an all-around unit. They, I can use them on patrol. You know, it's a, it's a full shift. They can be undercover operations or any mixture of that, traffic, whatever we happen to have going on in our area. Uh, but you can see that this is some of the uh, operations that we run and what kind of arrests we've made. And this is just the past, uh, I think it's the past 90 days. We're, we just wanted to see since the last commander's forum. So uh, this is, uh, you can see some of this stuff we don't do very often, bus lane compliance. Sometimes we'll get a, uh, Somebody will complain and we'll, we'll run the bus lanes, but uh, but some of the other ones, spotter operations are uh, uh, when we use the halo cameras to try and pick out the drug dealers and then we go in and get the dealer, uh, that kind of thing. We can, uh, high visibility, uh, I just want to run through a couple of these. Uh, let's see, the uh, BO, Vol BO uh, that's burglary vehicle, burglary resident operations. We're having... Some issues, especially in this area, this is George 1 over here, that's the district came for this area. And we were having, because this is where a lot of houses are, that kind of thing, we were having a lot of uh, property crimes over here. So we ran extra duty over here for quite a while. We have uh, something that came online a few months ago, it's called the business intelligence tool that we use now. And me and my team meet every Monday and Thursday to do what we call rapid response. We look at the data, we look at our hotspots for our crime, and then we can focus patrols in that area because, as you know, we only, you know, especially during the day, we have 10 officers if everybody shows up uh, to cover the whole area. This side was, you know, the other three districts on the other side. So if, uh, if we're having uh, issues in some place, we can immediately target that area. This uh, tool, it's called intelligence-led policing. It's really cool. It, it, it can pin it down to, like, you know, Wednesdays between this time and this time in this area, you're having a lot of issues. So you might want to concentrate some patrols in that area. It's not a guarantee. It's it's not like it's predicting, you know, crime, but it's showing that there's a pattern there and that we need to address it. We, uh, the sergeants on the shifts started using that. Uh, they use it at least twice a week. They'll pull it up. They'll look at their area. They assign their patrols accordingly. And we dropped it. Uh, the next month, when we when we worked a little pilot on that, we dropped it down to zero property crimes in this area by just using that tool, focusing patrols, and that that type of thing. So then we expanded it to the whole sector. So every, all the sergeants should be doing that at least at least a couple times a week, looking at the crime data and and assigning their officers appropriate. This this is a uh, an operation funded by the DAA. It's called, we call it boardwalk. Basically, it's four officers assigned during the day. They're being paid on overtime by the DAA again. So thanks to them for all the support. You know, the DAA really supports us a lot. So, uh, But they do walk and beat patrol in what we call the core, which is, you know, 6th Street, Congress, 4th Street, all that area. They can walk anywhere around there. They can, you know, they can even walk out of that area. But... Uh, that's where we have most of our issues. Their, their job mostly is to protect the uh, people that work downtown and the uh, businesses to try and keep the homeless population from gathering in spots uh, and that kind of thing. While they're out there, they make 
contacts. It's a friendly type situation. We're not out there. We're not being tasked with a bunch of arrests or anything. It's about interacting. They can contact our host team, which I'll, I'll say a little bit about. We just presented at council today about that. Uh, and we can get some people some help, or we can move the criminal element out of the downtown area. And that's what, that's what the whole job is. is uh, we're, we're trying to find that criminal element that's preying upon the homeless, that's preying upon the business owners, that's preying, that's preying upon the employees and the visitors. Uh, and so what we do is we, that's how we do it. This is a great program. We're hoping that it shows the stats, and the stats so far are off the charts as far as how many contacts they can make just by walking. And a lot of times they're on bikes. I won't say they're just walking. But, uh, but it's very visible patrol. Uh, people can ask them questions. They can give directions, whatever it happens to be. Uh, the, uh, we also have uh, Jayhawk here at night. I keep calling it Jayhawk, right? Jayhawk. Uh, we had an operations lieutenant like to name everything. So, uh, but basically, it's a, it's a whole other patrol shift hired on overtime that the city's funding at night. So they come in, they, they're kind of a power shift, they go out. You know, we, we end up having to concentrate a lot of officers on 6th Street, especially when it gets close to bar closing time on Thursday, Friday, and Saturdays. And that leaves all these other areas without much of a patrol presence. So I brought in my park police unit to cover south, and they cover this area plus Rainy Street and that stuff. But they, there's only six of them usually when they show up, six or eight. So they can cover this area, but we still had the other areas over by the Arch, over on West 6th Street, Warehouse District, we had to cover all that. Plus, keep some patrols in this area to keep the, the property crime down. We don't have, on this side of the highway, it seems like there's a lot of property crime, and on that side is where we have our violent crime. Uh, property crime is if you can eat it, midday, all day, or morning. It varies, right? Varies. When we were having our peak uh, times of burglary vehicles, those were typically at night uh, when people are parked. We had a real high area right there on, I think it's Fifth Street, where there's like some parking and, and there's railroad tracks or something right there. And then uh, on burglary residences, those were happening. Sometimes during the day, we had one month where we had several where people were home and they were breaking into the house at night. And so that's what prompted, we, you know, we got to do something. We can't wait for somebody to do something when they're breaking into a house. So. We flooded the area uh, and got, and, and when I say there's, we get a hot spot, the downtown area is pretty low in crime. I mean, this whole area is pretty low in reported crime, at least. Uh, you know, and that's all, that's all we can go on is what's reported to us. But the, the crime rate has been trending about the five-year low level in this whole area. That The burglary residence was a spike that we saw. We, we addressed that. Uh, and same with, uh, we've had... Robberies occasionally will spike individual robberies. That's typically over in the 6th Street, Arch, and all that, that kind of area in there. And that's typically at night. The prime victim is a drunk person, usually walking alone, and you know, 20 to 30 years old. So probably college kids or something. They get drunk, they, they walk around. Because one other thing that we've had, and I think I've said this in the past, is we have uh, a, a lot of our auto thefts turn out to be misparks. They park their car somewhere, they can't find it, they call it in as an auto theft, and we find it parked where they said it, you know, or, or within a block. And so you can imagine, they, they park their car, we, we try to put out, you know, information on, you know, lock it on your phone where you're at, where the car is at, so you can find it. But So they start wandering around downtown and they look like an easy target. And so uh, the Jayhawk uh, officers also target them to make sure that if they see somebody like that, that's a victim walking around. We need to uh, get them to their car, get them a cab, get them a ride. Uh, you know, one of the, it's not whatever the ride sharings are that we use now. And uh, try and get them out of the downtown area safely. But all in all, we basically bring the population of Round Rock, we bring it downtown, we get them drunk, and then we send them home. And we get almost everybody through here without much problem at all. You know, we have, uh, when I say we have a spike in robberies, that means we go to, we may have six in a month instead of three or four. And uh, we, we've had spikes higher than that before, and we've concentrated our med tech teams to do high visibility patrols. Uh, it's hard to prevent robberies, so we started, that's when we started kind of looking at the victims. What is the victimology on these? And we started really watching those and trying to 
just have a visible presence around them, if nothing else. Uh, I think that's about it for this one. Uh, the district reps, of course, they've been doing paint handling operations along with the, the day shifts. On Mondays, we have double day shifts. So they go out and do it. On uh, Thursdays, we have five patrol shifts working because three of our evening shifts come in that, that day. So uh, on those days, we were able to get a little bit more without costing taxpayers anything extra. So we get out there and we do it with a whole patrol shift. Uh, park police. I have park police also. And, you know, you'd be surprised how many parks there are in the downtown area and out here. Well, they're responsible for it for that if we need to run an operation in there. Uh, we, go ahead. Have you guys reduced uh, your presence on the trail recently? Because in the last, I don't know, several weeks when I'm out there, and I, I'm on the trail four or five days a week, and I used to see you guys almost every other time, and now I'm not seeing anybody. They have, you know, we have had to pull some to hit some of the parks. Uh, Sabine was just getting terrible. This, uh, uh, yeah, Sabine at the creek area, mm -hmm. you know, Waller Creek and all that. It was getting terrible, so we had to uh, pull some park police, because that's a park under mm -hmm. there, it's called, yeah, at least we consider it a park. And, uh, you know, they actually picked up a guy, was it two weeks ago, with a, a capital murder warrant under mm -hmm. there. So that's what I'm saying, we're, we're trying to get those those felony criminal mm -hmm. elements out of the because out of the downtown area the uh, regular homeless population we're, we're trying some other things with them because you know if you if we want them to move somewhere well where are we going to move them you know if you can't sit here where can i sit and that's what they ask you know if we tell them to move on they say well where can i go and it's like you know you just can't be here so we're we're working with city council trying some other uh things to try and work with that and that's part of the host team and all over that here in just a minute. But the plan then would be at some point to bring them back on the trail. And they, they are out there, but it's just not probably not as much of a presence as there has been. Mm -hmm. We do try and maintain a pretty high presence there and at Zilker. Uh, that's really the two primary areas where the park police are, are typically seen. But again, we've had to run some operations and had to pull them into some other areas. They're, they're really like, uh, you know, park police started out when they were a separate agency, they would take all the park calls. And APD would only back them up. Now they're APD officers and uh, have been for years. And so now when they have a park call, uh, they try and get a park officer to take it, but there's only six, maybe eight out at one time for the whole city. So we've started using them more as concentrated patrols on, the, on Lady Bird Lake or concentrated on Zilker Park or something like that. And, uh, or if we have to pull them and do some operations with them. We'll do that. Downtown again has been getting, uh, some of the parks are getting kind of uh, uh, run down and so we're, we're having to really focus. The one over there, Republic Park, uh, we had some issues on that and we were able to fix that basically by just keeping the lights on all night. You know, so we have other options that we can use and we're always open to suggestions if anybody has any. Uh, go ahead. 